Is it time to buy a puppy? There are a lot of ways to acquire a new dog, some better than others. Now, if you think you'd like to buy from a breeder, today's video is going to give you some great information on how to choose just the right one. Just a quick note before I jump in, if you aren't sure if you want to buy from a breeder or a rescue, stay tuned for another video that's going to come out soon all about how to choose a dog from a rescue organization. Now, these two videos are going to give you some great information to evaluate making this important decision. Now, don't forget to subscribe so you can get notified when that next video becomes available. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Now, I've actually owned about 20 dogs over the last 20 years as a trainer. Some were rescues, some were owner surrenders, and some I actually chose from breeders. I did a lot of research on the breeder before actually considering purchasing from them. Now, I wanted to make sure that they weren't just in it for the money and that their focus was on preservation of the breed as well as good breeding habits and practices. So many breeders breed to try and make a quick buck or breed cute looking puppies. Often these dogs actually end up with health issues and complications down the road. But before I get ahead of myself, we just wanna first talk about researching the breed. Now, you don't wanna pick a breed just based on cuteness or looks. And sadly, this is kind of what people do and they end up with the wrong dog for their family. Now, before you dive in researching breeders, let's start with deciding on a breed. There's really no short of information online about different breeds. And in this video here, we're gonna also give you a lot of information about some of those categories of dogs. So when researching dogs, of course, you're going to be looking at things like size, grooming needs, and energy levels. But it's also important to know what that dog was bred for. This is gonna play a role in what they wanna do and those natural behaviors that you're gonna see from them. So for example, Huskies, they were bred for stamina, which means that they are going to have a lot of energy and they love working hard. Corgis and Border Collies were bred to herd, so they're gonna love nipping the ankles, especially ankles of fast moving creatures like children. <laughs> the very best thing you can do when researching breeds is to actually talk to people too that own those breeds. Talk to people that work with dogs like veterinarians or people who own or work at boarding facilities or doggy daycares. Dog owners are going to be another great resource. Just ask questions. Do you want to find a lot of dog owners all in one place? Well, this is the one and only time I would recommend going to a dog park. <laughs> They're great for research and learning more about dog breeds, not just for socialization. I know if that surprises you and you want to know more about why I don't recommend dog parks or dog daycares, go ahead and check out this video here. Now, another great place to find a lot of dog owners is in my Facebook group, Puppy Training with Michelle Lennon. And if you're not a member yet, you should join today because there's a lot of amazing information in there and a lot of people sharing about their dog's behaviors and habits. Now, in my work as a trainer, I have helped a lot of people with their puppy challenges. And one of the biggest sources of conflict is if the dog is not gonna be a right fit for the family's lifestyle. So choosing a dog that's not compatible with your home will result in frustration for you and your dog. And you're gonna probably see a lot of unwanted behaviors. But these behaviors are probably natural instincts to your dog. So you're gonna to need to find a way to be creative and create that peace and harmony in your home and in your relationship with your dog. Trust me on this, just do your research. And if you have kids, do even more research. But breed is not the only thing that's important. Family lines and genetics are a huge part too. And that's where the breeder comes in. Now, where to look for that breeder? Let's start with where not to look for the breeder. Definitely don't look at signs hung up on light poles or fences and don't look in Facebook groups or on Craigslist. Now, I'm not saying that breeders who advertise in those places are all bad, but you might have to do a lot more work to find the ones that will fit your standards. You're after all looking for a professional, so actually start with professionals. The best place to actually look for a puppy is on the American Kennel Club website where breeders list their information. Now you can go to the www.akc.org. Don't worry, I'll put that link in the description below this video. And you can look up breeders based on their breed that you're actually interested in. Now, your vet could also be a really good source of information. He or she may work with certain breeders that are trustworthy. So speaking of vets, Medical costs are something that you're gonna to wanna to factor into your planning. Now is a good time to tell you about this video. Now another good place to look for a breeder 
Ask your friends and neighbors. If you like your friend's dog, find out where they got him or her. And if you see a dog on the street that's about the same size and temperament that you're seeking, stop the owner and have a chat. Most people are really happy to talk about their dogs and will share with you some of the traits they find most problematic and of course the most amazing. They will likely share that breeder information with you too. Now, if this seems like a pretty long way to go about finding that breeder, just trust me on this. Most reliable breeders earn their reputation by providing healthy pups to good homes, which results in word of mouth references. Hear this point very clearly. Good breeders don't need to advertise to find owners. You can also look online for local clubs or particular breeds. They probably organize meetups and play dates, and then you can go and talk to those owners there. Just like car enthusiasts would love to tell you all about their cars, dog lovers are the same way. Now you definitely want to plan ahead on this. Good breeders might have to put you on a waiting list. Use this time to study canine behavior and science like the lessons you'll find in our online course. Don't worry though, you actually have unlimited access to the content we have in our course, so it's never really too early to enroll. Okay, so now that we've chatted about how to learn more about dog breeds and where to find the breeder, let's talk about what to do when you connect with one. Now it's gonna be important to screen the breeder, sort of like you're interviewing them. Now, once you've selected one or maybe more breeders to consider, it's time to go for a visit. Now, if they live really far away or you're just not able to meet, this can be done through a video call. Video is definitely gonna be more important than just having a phone conversation because you're gonna to wanna to see the environment in which the parent dogs live and if there are other puppies on site. Now, if the two dogs live in different places, plan a video call with the mama dog owner. And if you really wanna do great research, talk to the owner of the father dog as well. That's what I would do. Now, a good breeder starts their work long before actually breeding the dogs. Reputable breeders always ensure that the parent dogs are strong and healthy and have traits and personalities that will be appreciated by their customers. They breed in order to emphasize those traits that they want to be passed along to the next generation of puppies. Now, when you talk to the breeder, I want you to ask a lot of questions. Don't hold back. Good breeders are actually happy to talk at length and answer any kind of questions you have about their program and their dogs. Do the breeder a favor and do all your breed research first and then inquire about the specific health and behavior behavioral traits from those puppies that you're looking into. You're going to want to ask a lot of questions about the dog parents, including temperament, what they like to do, and what are the signs of the challenging behaviors they see from those dogs. It will be important to keep in mind how you'll provide enrichment if your puppy inherits some of those traits. All right, let's move on to the fun part, the puppies! <laughs> how responsible breeders care for their puppies. All right. Once puppies are born, you can learn a lot about the quality of the breeder by the way the pups are being cared for. Now, even if a litter does not contain a puppy that you're gonna be buying, you can get a great indicator of the breed's care and habits by watching any litter they have. Here are some things to look for in a good breeder. Is the dog area clean? Does it have an unpleasant odor? How often is it cleaned? Does the breeder show a true passion for the dogs? How do the dogs interact with the breeder and any strangers? It's always a good indicator if the puppies don't shy away from the breeder and they're outgoing with strangers. Is the breeder positively exposing the puppies to different types of people or animals or noises and any environments different than where they were born? This will help to make sure that they're more behaviorally and emotionally healthy when they head to their new home. Now you can ask the breeder what kind of socialization and exposure training they do with their pups before they go to their forever homes. Are the mother dog and puppies indoors with protection from extremely low or high temperatures? Or are they left outside or in a barn away from daily human interactions? Do they even have access to the outdoors when temperatures are safe? Do the puppies have regular outlets to engage in normal behaviors such as chewing and digging and running? Now, if those dogs are housed in kennels, do they have adequate living space with comfortable flooring? Now, are the kennels equipped with padded spaces for sleeping? Do the dogs have daily exercise and time to socialize with other dogs and people? Are there children on site so that the dogs are exposed to the children early on? Now, other questions you can ask are about the mother dog, starting with her age. It's important not to breed a female before she's physically and mentally mature. This will depend on the breed. It's also important not to breed a female past the appropriate age for her breed as well. Now, you can ask how many litters the mother dog has already had, or is this her first litter? 
has she already had several litters? An inexperienced breeder with a first time mother may miss a lot of opportunities to help the pups before they leave that litter. Does the breeder screen all prospective owners to determine their suitability and motivations for getting a dog? Responsible breeders only sell puppies to people they meet in person, never at pet stores or over the internet to people they haven't met or that they haven't thoroughly screened through meetings or video calls or some sort of interview. Is the breeder providing you with information on the breed that's consistent with your research? Promises that a dog will be a perfect fit or hypoallergenic are never realistic. All dogs come with challenges. Just be familiar with what they might be and how capable you are of managing them. Responsible breeders are going to ask you to sign a contract stating that you will spay or neuter the dog unless you're going to be actively showing him or her. And the contract will also state that you will return the dog to the breeder should you be unable to keep the dog uh, at any point in the dog's life. Another question to ask, will the breeder be available for questions and guidance after the puppies left their care? Does the breeder provide you with any information about the dog's lineage or health records? Some of the best breeders that I've actually worked with, um, they've sent me home with a binder filled with information on all the dogs in my pup's lineage dating back several generations. They've even included vet records of the parents of the pups. Now, <laughs> I know that's a lot of questions, but a good breeder will have no problem sharing all the answers with you. There are a few things to watch out for when choosing a breeder. These are some red flags that might just make you pause or investigate this business a little bit more thoroughly. Always having puppies available. Responsible breeders really breed sparingly. They focus on only one or a few breeds and one to two litters per year, not year round. If a breeder isn't interested in what kind of home that the puppy will be going to, you might want to reevaluate. Sending the pups home too early. Pups should go to their new homes generally between eight to 10 weeks and not younger than seven weeks. Any breeder that tells you different is feeding you potentially a pack of lies or doesn't have the puppy's best care in mind. What about no references? <laughs> you should expect a good breeder to provide references from other families who've purchased one of their puppies. And definitely follow up on those references. Call the people and talk to them about their experience purchasing from the breeder and the pup's temperaments and the characteristics. Another red flag, no return policy. Responsible breeders should take one of their dogs back if an issue arises or an emergency arises. Another red flag, overbreeding. Allowing the female to rear more than the appropriate number of litters in her lifetime, which is generally no more than four to six litters. Okay, I know that was a lot of information, but I believe in you, you're ready. You've done your research, you're ready to get your puppy, you've put in the work, you want to find the puppy that's just the right fit. Now, before we finish up here, I just want to give you a few quick items to do before your puppy leaves the breeders. So before taking your puppy home, you're going to want to rub the mama's scent on a towel or a blanket or even a snuggle puppy. <laughs> that's the stuffed animal with a mechanical heartbeat in it. This can actually help the transition of your puppy into the home go a lot smoother. Also, take note which food or take some of the food from the breeder that they were feeding. Even if you plan to transition to a new food, be sure to get some of the puppy's existing food. Puppies have super sensitive tummies and the transition to new foods needs to be done over a period of time, usually about seven to 10 days, sometimes even longer. So also find out what the puppy's daily routine has been like with the breeder. Of course, this is definitely gonna change, but for now, it's gonna help keep you on track and help you with the potty training and the sleep schedule. Get a health and vaccination record from that breeder before you leave as well. Make sure that the puppy has a health certificate or vaccination records, maybe even the deworming dates and all prior health records. If the breeder doesn't have any of these, this may be a huge red flag. A reputable breeder will have taken the pups to the vet at least one, maybe even two times before they go home. And a really good breeder will actually take their pups to an eye specialist or even a heart doctor to confirm all is well in those departments too. Other things that would be good, but really aren't required are a sales contract, a health guarantee of some sort, resources regarding breed specific health problems and expectations, and a negative fecal exam. Now, if you plan to utilize the national registry, be sure to get that documentation from the breeder as well. Did you catch all that? I know it was a lot of information, but the good news is that you can actually rewatch the video. This one here as many times as you need to absorb all that information I just shared. Just like we train puppies with repetition, 
humans need a little too. All right, once you've got that fur baby in your arms, it's time to head home. Now, for all the great tips on getting that little one home safely, check out this video here. Then you can move on to the other great content we have, especially in my free new puppy starter kit, which is gonna actually get you started on the potty training and establishing a schedule. And be sure to check out the other YouTube videos we have on this channel, including how to survive the first 24 hours, the first week, and what to expect when he or she grows up. All right, in the comments below, tell me which breed are you considering for your new puppy?